to ask you about your experience at the ESPYs last night. What was your most moving experience about this? Well, you know, I, you know, I really want to, I want to <laughs> commend and take my hat off to all the athletes uh, last night. You know, I want to say thank you to all the fans that support every athlete because, you know, that. You know, the athletes and the media, the different media outlets are the driving force that keeps us alive and keeps us going every day. So that's very, very important. Last night I was nominated in two different categories. I was nominated uh, for Fighter of the Year and I was also nominated for Athlete of the Year. Um, if I won or lost, it really didn't matter. The thing is this, I'm just thankful for the fans that did go out there and vote for me. And um, Kevin Durant won athlete, athlete of the Year, and I commend him for that. He's a very, very good athlete, and he's one of the best basketball players to ever pick up a basketball. What do you think of Stuart Scott's speech last night? Um, you know, I was sitting at, the, you know, my, well, my date was my daughter, my youngest daughter. <laughs> she was sitting right next to me, and, and you know, it was real. It was. It was. It was real touching. His story, and um, you know, just how he hugged his daughter and, and, his, and his story and, and everything that he had been through. It was crazy, and I, I was just thinking that can be any one of us. So we have to be thankful for. We just have to be thankful for, for every day that we live life and be appreciative. Floyd, talk about the reason why you decided to give him the immediate rematch. Um. I think that the bar is set so high for Floyd Mayweather, whereas people expect so much from me, to whereas normally when I go out there in a fight, I win, I, I win all 12 rounds. Or I go out there, I win 11 rounds and lose one round. Or I knock a guy out. But this is the first time they, they've seen a guy actually win uh, three rounds out of 12 rounds. Even though, I, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm honestly, and I'm honest with it, I think that Miguel Cotto is a lot tougher, uh, better boxer, stronger, and um, uh, I just think that Miguel Cotto is a better fight. And, I, and honestly speaking, Canelo's a better fight. It was just that me, with me and Canelo, it was more of a chess match. It was more of a chess match to where this guy, you know, he came in um, very, very dirty and very, very reckless to where I had it, you know, taking my time to watch this guy because I knew that something crazy was going was going to happen in the fight, which he did. You know, I got a, a headbutt, you know, because this guy, like I said before. And I'm just saying, if Robert Garcia is one of the best trainers in the world, you don't give your fighters advice like go out there and cheat to win or uh, let, yeah, let us fight with our gloves on with no padding, on, no padding in the gloves. That, I mean, Conduct yourself like a gentleman at the end of the day. Even though we're in a brutal sport, if you beat me, earn it, the, earn it the hard way. I got to the top by hard work, dedication, prayers and belief in a good team. If you're gonna beat me, earn it the hard way. Don't cheat to win. And that's what is so crazy with the Ortiz fight. Everybody's always trying to cheat to beat me. If you're gonna beat me, earn it. That's all I gotta say. If you're gonna beat me, earn it the hard way. Floyd, what was, um you know, you. I've, I've followed your career, and I've, this is like the first few times I've ever heard you say you're gonna look for the knockout in this fight. What, why? Why the knockout? Talk? What is it? Well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta listen to me when I when I speak because you, you you say that, but you gotta. The key is you hear me, but the key is listening. You see, if you hear somebody you're going one ear, and it's out the other. But if you listen, it's gonna stay. It's, it's gonna stay. Okay. What I said is this. Of course. You know, I want to get the knockout. But you got to realize, a lot of times, later on in my career, in the beginning, guys was coming to fight. Guys was coming to fight to win. So they was putting it all on the line in the beginning of my career. And guess what? I was getting those guys out of there. Now, I'm fighting these guys. <coughs> And they feel like they're victorious just if they go the distance. Or they win two or three rounds out of 12 rounds. I say, well, I went the distance with them. I gave them a tough fight because I gave them a tough battle for three rounds. That means I won the fight. 
and it don't work like that. Whereas what I said is this, am I looking for the knockout? I'm not looking for the knockout. I'm looking for the victory, but the knockout presents itself. I'm gonna take full advantage of it. Floyd, you're the highest paid athlete. What does it mean to the sport of boxing? You have a boxer, make more money than any NBA star, any football star, any soccer player? Well, I just don't feel like, I just feel like, you know, I look at my career, I say, you know what? I just look. I say, all these guys, guys. I said, having a certain brand on your back don't define your greatness. If you're good, you're good. If you're not, you're not. And I'm gonna continue to say this. There's a, difference be, there's, a dif there's a difference between being talented and God gifted. There's a difference. What's going to be the difference between this fight and the last fight? The well, I don't have to make no adjustments because I know it. He know. It's no different from when I go to the boxing gym and I had a bad day. If I go spar and I know I boxed 10 rounds and the guy won three out of 10, that's, that's considered a bad day for me. That's considered a bad day because the bar is set so high. And this guy know, he know in his heart, he didn't win, he know it. So if I felt like I really, I felt, if I felt like I really took an L, then guess what? I wouldn't be going right back in and say fight him again. I know I beat him and he know I beat him. But once again, if he, if he go fight someone else, is he gonna make the same much money as he made, as he made, as he just made? So he's like, no, I'm not stupid. I'm going right back over here and trying to make the fight happen again. Just because he raised his hand at the, at the last round. I mean, come on, man. He, he know he lost. Are you going to listen to your I mean, after the press conference right after the fight, you said you kept apologizing to your dad. Are you going to listen to him more? Whatever you all improvised to be able to put him away? Um, you know, I, I probably was feeling that way that day. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm only human. We feel different ways, different days. I can, you know, I can contradict myself, I'm human. You know, I make mistakes, I'm human. So, and, and like I always say, things happen, but he know. And that's like Robert Garcia, I'm more like, okay, you can go down as the best trainer, but I'm going down as the best fighter, there's a difference. And, and I was, you know, the other day we were just talking, you know, at the press conference, he said, yeah, well, Diego Corrales is gonna, you know, and may he rest in peace, because I love Diego, you know, I love Diego Corrales. Um, he said Diego Corrales is, is going down in, in the Hall of Fame as a warrior. And he said, I said, well, if I beat him, and I go down in the Hall of Fame, what am I going down in? That's what I'm trying to find out. And all I said is this, you know, I don't really know nobody that's, I mean, I don't know, you know, and, I take my hat off to every champion. You know, every champion that paved the way from Sugar Ray Leonard to Sugar Ray Robinson um, to Ali, and the, and the list goes on and on. You know, Larry Holmes to Joe Frazier, I mean, Marvin Hagler, Roberto Duran, Wilfred Benitez, and I'm, I'm saying, and the list goes on and on. Floyd, how, how much but, longer do you plan to fight? Um, well, everybody know I have a a certain deal, but if Steve and him give me another deal, I'm in. Lloyd, how are you? Good to see you. How are you doing? Finally, you out? Oh, baby, you know me. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, Mike, I'm waiting for you out there. All right, okay, you got it. here? Uh, yeah, what it? No, they're in here. They're they're in here. All right, mine are over there. Okay. So, good to see you, Floyd. Oh, yeah. Floyd, my last question is. We got the man that built Golden Boy in here, huh? The <laughs> real man that built Golden Boy. For the last 18 years, I'm from Texas. I go, go to the barber shop. Why, why are you boy made with the run? Why don't people realize that getting hit is not cool? Uh, What's well, so cool? Well, I don't. I think if I was, you know, this, we just. I'm just trying to find out who's still around from the 96 Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find out, and you know, I don't have anything. Well, I'm almost 20 years in, still sharp, still feel good, still going strong. I think all those other fighters, they should have been defensive fighters. <laughs> I think so. In this fight, how do you plan to make this an easier fight? Um, it was an easy fight the first time. Fight the first time. I wouldn't just because a guy can come out and, 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 and fight basically with a windmill style. And we're not talking about let's talk about 
Pull up the punch stats. I mean, this guy missed. Half of that stuff was going. He landed a few. He landed a few. But you know, that comes with the territory. Did you feel like you solved him, especially over the course of the last five, six rounds, Floyd? And is, is this fight going to be a continuation of, of those rounds? Um, it's more like everything is everything in life is patience. And that's something that I learned. You know, just I used to be taken when I used to be, of course, on the U.S. team, U.S. amateur team, when I used to be traveling, because I had been around the world before I was 19. I used to be taking them long flights to Germany. I used to take them long, long flights to Moscow, Russia. I used to be like, I couldn't, you know. But then I just learned it like, you know what? It is what it is. You got to have patience. So just like the fight, you know, when a guy's throwing a wild punches, I can see everything going on. I said, just take my time, take my time. And when, when, it's, when it's time for me to dish mine out, hopefully, hopefully, he has the same thought process as I do, which I know he don't. Because once again, this is chess. This is chess, not checkers. So every move I make, every move I make is calculated. Not just in the ring, but in life, period. Floyd, do you think May Donna cannot fight any better than he did May 3rd? That's as good as it gets from him. Absolutely not. He, can't, he, he cannot fight any better. Just like y'all seen in the fight. I just, I turn around quick and make adjustments. And that's what, sets me apart from other fighters and just other athletes, period. Because if you watch basketball, once the crowd is into it, a team can have a lead. And once the crowd get into it, that lead closes and the game gets very, very close. A lot of times, the, uh, the team loses. With a team, that's, with a team that was up, that team end up losing. So whereas, you, you know, you look at me and you see the fans screaming, screaming the song for Madonna, you know, whatever the song may be, I'm not worried about it. But guess what? Nothing is knocking me off my square because I know that the fans cannot fight for the fighter. I know my team cannot fight for me. So no matter what Robert Garcia say, he cannot get in there. How can you tell this guy how to beat me and the guy that beat you, I beat him. He, he said that you, you might have lost some stuff. What do you think about that? He's entitled to his own opinion. He's entitled to his own opinion. Floyd, the big thing with Alex Ariza, he's not in Maidana's corner anymore. To my knowledge, you've never used a strength and conditioning coach. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think they're necessary in the sport? Because a lot of fighters start using well, it. Well, I, like, uh, I, mean, I like Ariza to come over to my camp. You know? <laughs> you know, since I don't, I don't use no physical trainer. And... Um, you know, it's so crazy. They keep talking about these different trainers that's supposed to be the best trainers in the world. But somehow, I keep beating all their fighters. And then, if, if you know, um, I just look at, they say when I fought Marquez, he was over the hill. But then he come back, he he knocked uh, that dude out. I, I can say that dude, because he don't really got no name to me, because, you know, I'm up here when I'm just, I don't see nobody. <laughs> So when he knocked that dude out, then they say, then everybody want to point the finger at Madonna and say, oh, he's using some, I mean, not, not Madonna, but Marquez, oh, he's using some. No, no, no. I just say like this, and take it for what it is. You know, like, like, like um, Forrest Gump say, life is like a box of chocolates. It, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You got Kel Brook out there, you got Tony T. Bradley, you got all these fighters out there that love to fight. Okay, kids. but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not in the sport really like that. No. Who you say? Kill <coughs> Don't know him. Timothy Bradley. I know him. Sean Porter. <laughs> know him a little bit. Seen him in the gym a couple of times. Uh, I, I seen him, he came to my box and me train. I seen him fight, you know. Uh, but you know, they, uh, by the time, they, they, won't, they won't reach for him anyway, because by that time I'll be gone. Well, and after well, the you went to the board yesterday, and the first thing you do, everybody else goes to party, and you went straight to the gym to work. Where do you get that drive? Um, just um, that's you know, just um, yesterday. I know what it took to get to where I'm at. I know what I know what it took to get to where I'm at. So I love being in this position. I don't just like it. I love it. 
And I didn't get in this position by doing a thousand interviews, doing a bunch of red carpets. I got to this, this place in my career by my team not being around me sometimes and I'm waking up at three in the morning running eight miles and voices going through my head that he can beat you, Floyd. You don't deserve to be there. <laughs> but then there's another voice that's in my head where my mother is telling me, you special. And you where you at for a reason. So that's those are the things no one would never see or, or never understand. And I want to continue to push myself to the limit. I want to continue to be the best. And the only way you can be the best is you got to work when your opponent is not working. So I know when he's sleeping, I'm working. And I know when he's working, I'm working. And like I always tell all the young kids, that's all the young kids that's, enter that's getting involved in the entertainment business or the kids that are getting involved in sports, I tell them this, and this is the truth. I tell them, don't watch TV, watch me. And when you're watching TV, you're watching me. How serious are you thinking about fighting past the, the fights left on your Showtime contract? I never said that. I was going to do that. But what I am going to do is go out, go out there in September 13th and be sharp as a razor, be extremely sharp. And if, I mean, you know, if the price is right for number 50, then it's possible. Could that well, fight be in Brooklyn? I was with Brett Yormark yesterday at the win, and he said his goal was to get Floyd Mayweather to fight at Barclays Center before Floyd Mayweather finished fighting. How realistic is that goal on his part? I, I mean, you know, everything takes time. We, can, mm -hmm. we, cannot, we can't really say what the future holds, but as of right now, MGM Grand is what it is. Las Vegas is what it is. And I'm going to go out there and perform. One more question. Get one fight in before you walk out. I can't really say at this particular time. I can't really say. But what I can say is MGM Graham has been loyal to me, and I've been loyal to them. And we have a, a great relationship. And I love fighting in Las Vegas. But it, it, it has always been one of my ultimate goals was to fight in New York City. Floyd, do you, do you honestly think that sometimes you get the impression that some fighters want to fight you for, has this, have you ever gotten the impression that sometimes fighters want to fight you for the payday rather to. than get the W? If, if I was a walk away, I would want to fight Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Even though I took a loss, I would want to fight. No, we got, we got like, like I said before, all my, every move I make, and my thought, my thought process is totally different from everyone else's. Now, if I knew that I couldn't beat Floyd Mayweather, I'm still gonna try to fight him. And I'm just gonna, even if he kicked my ass, I'm gonna try to survive. Just to say, I fought the best. Floyd, you went at the end fight news conference that you shook your hands and said you would give them a rematch. Is this a fulfillment of that promise? Um. Or is there other reasons? Um, at that particular time, we were joking, you know, because Robert Garcia, he's doing all the talking, but he don't have to get in there and, and fill this raft. You know, he, he don't have to get in here and fill this raft. You know, I can I can I, I can't worry about what Robert. How can Robert Garcia make a bet? You're just a trainer. It's not your money. So. He's trying to come on record and say, uh, shake my hand. Oh, I can wear my gloves. No, you're not fighting me with gloves with no padding. No, you're not. And a lot of times they say, and, and, and the Nevada Commission is, the, is one of the best commissions in the world. And they say the gloves was approved. At the end of the day, I don't think nobody from the, the Nevada Commission has ever gotten inside that square circle and had to fight. I did, and I love being, and, and like I said, Nevada Commission is one of the best commissions. They're firm and very, very fair. But it's about protecting the fighters because we have, I have a life after boxing. And I'm still, I still have a sharp mind. I'm, I'm still, 
I'm still quick with everything because I haven't took no punishment in the sport. Because I was a, a defensive fighter, and, and my team always made sure I was on an even playing field, and I wasn't put, I wasn't put, I wasn't put in a bad predicament. And that's what it's about. He, if he want to fight in the MMA, I wish him nothing but the best. If he if he want to fight a bare knuckle brawl, I wish him nothing but the best. But if you're gonna fight me, we're gonna be on an even playing field. It's no wonder why he got so many knockouts. Because, like I said before, is he a strong? Is he is he a strong individual? Yeah, I mean, he's strong. Nothing I never felt before. But beat me the honest way. Just beat just earn it, earn it, the, earn it the right way. Then I can take my hat off to you and say, you know, I respect you for that. Floyd, you mentioned New York. Floyd, you fight in the UK. Remember, you stayed here, money, thousand people. Before you bow out. Um, I don't, I can't really say. Everybody want me to fight everywhere. <laughs> They say, they say uh, New York, they say Dubai, they say Texas. London, I mean, Las Vegas as of right now. I mean, listen, I'm going to talk about the gloves. Listen, stop, you want, you wanted the rematch, I gave you the rematch. Don't get to complain about the gloves, because you, you feel you won the first time with those gloves. You don't need no, you don't need no more no gloves, you don't need no other gloves. He, he said that he won the fight, so if you won the fight, win it again with the same gloves. Floyd, seeing this is you getting into the end of you getting to the end of your career, are you starting to kind of live in the moment, trying to enjoy this is all gonna be a memory at one point. Are you paying more um, attention to what you're doing now with these last few fights? Um Has it hit you? <laughs> as far as just boxing, I mean just as far as I don't watch boxing at all. I probably watch, who was the last fight we watched, Rick? Hey Rick, who was the last fight we watched? Yeah, I think I watched Pacquiao fight, I did. Actually, I, did. I watched Pacquiao fight, I was sitting in a, I was at the, um, I was at the Mirage, and one of the, I was standing in the villas at the Mirage, and we are sitting in a hot tub. But, I mean, I wasn't gonna spend my own money. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna spend my own money, but um, did I watch it? Absolutely, I watched it. Was I impressed? Nah, looked like an amateur. Did you see Cotto against Martinez? Um, yep, I watched that fight too. And I, actually, I paid for that fight. I paid for that fight. I was in uh, Miami, in my house in Miami, because I'm, I'm moving around a lot always. <laughs> and um, Martinez was the guy that they said, to beat Mayweather. I mean, for, I mean that's what they see. You know, it is what it is. What about the intense stare down? I heard he got physical with you last time with the San Antonio stop. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just more like, you gotta get shots. And, and we got, um, <laughs> you know, I got my app, Shots. You know, you gotta download that on, on the iPhones. But as today, I think we're going to Android. Yes. I'm going to Android today, so y'all gotta download Shots, my app, because you could, it's organic selfies. You know, no filters, all organic. Like me, I'm organic, baby. <laughs> so y'all gotta, so gotta download it so y'all we take them selfies. You didn't watch Canelo last week. I didn't get a chance to watch Canelo. Actually, um, I flew from Panama. I flew from Panama to um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, just to take my grandmother to dinner and take her to a movie. How, so. how nice was that? Ah oh, man, you always say you can't do stuff like that because you know. Well, I had, to, I had to take a, a had to take a whole yeah, staff. Yeah, guys with you. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> have you had a chance to find out who uh, Ronda Rousey is? She's female athlete of the year. Yeah, I wish her uh, congratulations because I didn't know the, who she was the other day. <laughs> she, she says the media has been trying to start some new stuff. Yeah, you, you know, I, you know, I apologize because I didn't, I didn't know, you know, because I'm used to watching football and. Basketball, like I'm not really into boxing like that. You know, when the fighters, but when they tell me a fighter, they say, Floyd, you need to check out a fighter. You need to scout a fighter. I said, well, let me see him. I said, we need to sign him. Are you still any interest in getting involved in uh, MMA and management and, and that kind of stuff? I mean, of course. I mean, what the promotions, we are the past, the present, and the future of sports and entertainment. And yes, we will get involved with, with other contact sports in the future. Thanks everybody. If you can make your way across the street, Thank you, Floyd just